Hey everyone, I'm Brad from Calgary. This is Sean from Cambridge, Ontario. I'm Terry from Cornwall, Ontario. Hey, this is Larry from Pitt Meadows, British Columbia. And you're listening to the Towing Life Podcast. Welcome to the Towing Life Podcast, where the ditches are deep, the trucks are loaded, but the drivers are not. I am your host, Towman G, and as usual, I am joined by my co-host, friend, and former co-worker, the one Jane Wonder himself, Mr. Plain Guy. What is going on, G? What is going on? I know I ask you that question every week, and I normally end up regretting the answers that we get from you. Um, I hope it's been going a little better for you. You're you're not going to regret it. It's the same shit, different day, just a (laughs) clean sailing. How about you? Uh, not too bad. We've been pretty busy. You know what? We haven't really had our dead time this year. We've we've kept very busy, which is uh, which has been a good thing. Um. So yeah, no, it's been good. It's been good. It's a little Heard wet. You were so- a little hung under this morning. <laughs> Absolutely. As we were sitting here recording this, it is Halloween. We had a little get together. <laughs> we had a little get together. We had a little uh, way too overserved last night. So. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, feeling much better now. You know what's actually great? This is like one of the first years I'm not working Halloween, so I have a lot less stress level for worrying about a little goblin or ghoul jumping out in the dark in front of my tow truck. So it's just nice. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know what? It was, yeah, driving around at night, you always had to keep your eyes peeled a little bit extra. Um, Trick or treating seems to be earlier and earlier, it seems, nowadays, so that really helps. But... uh, but at the same time, it was something that you had to look out for. Before we get into it too much, though, G, I do want to mention, speaking of Halloween, if you guys have any photos from Halloweens, if you did some cool decorations on your trucks, if you, you know, did some trick-or-treating at your shop, maybe, I know there's companies that have done that over the years, we want to see them. Uh, along with any other comments, anything you want to share with us, you can find us on Facebook Search at the Towing Life Podcast. You can email us directly, thetowinglife at gmail.com, or you can visit the website. There is a form there on the contact us, www.towinglife.ca. We love to see the photos from you guys. As you can see, if you're watching on the YouTube side, we got the Weekend Warrior behind us. Um, Also a good time to give a shout out to, you know, we talk about companies that make it possible for us to continue putting out the show. Uh, we don't have any ads rolling through this episode. You guys get, you know, 45 to 45 minutes to an hour of just us. But that do doesn't do? mean there aren't supporters that are helping us. We've got Cornwall Towing, who has, you know, come on and helped us out. Baker Heavy Towing as well out of Cambridge. Big shout out to those guys. It uh, it wouldn't be possible without them. If you'd like to find out how you could have your logo up here with us on the video side or the shout out, feel free. You can contact us any of those ways. Comment through YouTube. We'll reach out to you. And yeah, you know, it's all about uh, it's all about supporting those others. And, you know, we're here for the towing industry. We're here for the towers. We're glad to see that you guys are here for us as well. We really appreciate that. You a big movie guy? Uh, kind of, sort of. You, everyone would remember. I'm hoping anyone listening, watching has seen Dumb and Dumber. Uh, one, I believe it was in the original one they talk about, you know, you ever hear the most annoying sound in the world, right? And What's that? Jim Carrey or whoever goes, goes on with this just terrible noise. I'm not going to repeat it because I do not want to blow your ears out. Huh. But any roadside guys will understand this. This is a PTSD sound that we all have. It is the most annoying sound in the world. I never want to hear it, but you all know what I'm talking about. When you hear that... That is not a good time. That is not a good time. That is one of the most annoying sounds in the world. We all know it too well. I'm wondering how many guys were sitting in their truck right now and all of a sudden looked over and went, oh, is that me? Mm. Uh, (laughs) It is something that drives me absolutely batshit. I I know you know that feeling. I played that sound earlier and you were actually, you know, I'm like, do you hear that? And you're like, oh, I thought you were getting a call. (laughs) (laughs) I, uh, I set it up so my phone will read out text messages. Right. So I get my dispatch to send calls to that. Right. And at night, you would hear, da-ding, uh, bill, dispatch, work, work, work. And that's what I just do to help wake me up. Yeah. As long with the flashlight on the phone. And then you'd hear that, you'd wake up, and you'd hear uh, tire change, and you'd be like, oh. 
or it would come in as like police call and you'd be like okay here i go <laughs> yeah. i don't think i could do that i think the ding would be enough because if i heard the call before i actually opened my eyes i would not open my eyes depending on what that call was coming across <laughs> so uh props to you for doing it i really don't think i could handle doing that see now that's that's a tip for people out there is if you are like me and have a tendency of falling back asleep make sure that doesn't stop there make sure that will repeat itself or whatever make sure that you get out of bed the first time that call comes in because it's uh, nothing worse than you getting a text message and then a phone call five minutes later from your dispatcher who's already gone back to sleep but has now woken up again from a phone call from said company wondering where the fuck their driver is no it's not a we've all done it if you know we talked about that before it's all things we've all done before if you haven't done that you are full of shit right we've had those calls where you wake up get the details all right give me five minutes it's an hour later right we've all had especially when you get into work in those crazy long hours and everything else it's not fun um and you wake up with the biggest you know dropping your stomach going oh no right i've had that where it's you know, you get the call. All right, I'm going to go, you know, I'm just going to, you know, give it five minutes. Give it five minutes. I'll get to it. And then I wake up and I go, oh, my God, how long? What time is it? And then you look and it's been like five minutes. And you're like, oh, thank God. Yeah. Thank God. Or you dream that you get a call. I've oh. done that before. I, I dream that I'm working and doing weird, bad shit, crazy things. And I wake up in the morning like, oh, my God, I got a call sent to me like an hour and a half ago. I'm just waking up now and I put myself into this massive panic to start my day off when I'm off that day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not an ideal way to uh to start off a day, that's for sure. When you wake up, you know, same thing, you wake up late, you get rushed. Everything doesn't feel right for the day. You want to be up, you want to be ready to go, you want to be, you know, but when you get into those long hours, sometimes it's just unavoidable. Yeah. So, playing guy, getting into something else. You yep. train me. So I know what uh, your I take no is. responsibility for that. <laughs> what kind of tips would you have for rookies out there, either just getting into the industry or even thinking about getting into the industry? We had a comment left on YouTube by Chris32, and that's what his question was. Any tips for rookies out there? Right. We always see that. You see that a lot on the towing groups on social media too, right? You're seeing that, Hey, what are tips? And the, the generic response from all the old dogs out there is always run, <laughs> run, <laughs> don't do it. Uh, and, and they're right in ways to say that, right? Especially with the amount lack of professionalism in certain spots on the industry, you know, depending on where you are, it's not for everybody. But if I had a genuine new guy coming to me and saying, Hey, I'm interested in the towing industry or I'm just starting at a company, what would I, what advice can you give me? Listen, that's the biggest one, listen. There is so many great operators out there, so many great operators within single companies. I've, I've worked for many of them. The biggest advice a guy gave me and I can give to any new guy is that everyone does things a little differently. So listen, pay attention and find your way. Never, think you know it all there is 30 year veterans in the industry that have no idea on you know that little sit, still sit there and tell you they're learning so never be the guy that thinks that you know everything right we sit here on this show and you know can give that impression where we have all the answers i can tell you i don't i've never ran into the scenarios <laughs> so for a new guy starting off keep that in mind that even the veterans don't have all the answers. They're figuring it out as they go. So listen, pay attention, and pick up on tricks from guys. Now, the thing is, double-edged sword there, you're dealing with, if you're learning from a guy who's been in the industry for 30 years, the industry 30 years ago is completely different to what it is now. So if you are taught how to do something one way, and you see another operator out on the road doing something like what you're doing, but doing it completely different. Don't be afraid to say, Hey man, you, you got five minutes to let me know what's going on through your head or why you're doing it this way compared to this way. Because I've been at my pound and a flatbed driver training someone has showed up, put a single J hook off the back and left, pulled the winch tight. 
does the car stay? Yes, it does. Is it legal? Is it right? No, it's not. But my biggest tip for rookies out there is that is even if you if you really enjoy it, don't just limit yourself to the knowledge that's in your company. Ask people. Talk to other people. And don't overthink anything. At the end of the day, to tow a car, what do you got to do? You got to get underneath the fucking thing. And this is, to be honest with you, I didn't really make that click up until like a year ago. I've been in it for five years. If you've got something with a ball joint, broken ball joint sitting on the ground, what's the first thing that you got to do? Back it up. Don't pass it on. Don't pass it off to the next guy. Don't pass it off to a flatbed. What do you got to do? Get underneath the fucking thing. How are you going to do that? Well, something that lifts it. Whether that be your truck, a winch, or a jack to get a block of wood underneath of it. it it's All you always do hard. Is, huh? It's always hard training you guys with that because you sit there and, you know, how do you not overwhelm them by still giving them all the information? Yeah. What I mean by that is, you're right, you know, you start on day one towing. You're not teaching a guy a broken ball joint. Day one towing is these, this is what the tools are. This is how they work, yep. right? Day two, okay, we might start to get into, you know, a little crazier and a little crazier. Let's get one thing down at a time. And that's what I think is the hardest part about the training, right? And I had said to you back when, even when I trained you, I can't tell you how to do everything. What I can do is show you different ways of doing things and you find the best way when it comes to dealing with that specific situation right broken ball joint rule number one jack it up okay then depends did the ox did the wheel jam and pull the ball you know pull the axle out you know did the wheel fold right under is the fender crushed how can you secure that down it's different every time right you yeah. get the the general same thing every time in a sense where normally when a ball joint lets go a fender gets taken out and a cv shaft if it's a front wheel drive gets taken with it now, some you can get back into place, some you can't, but that really does come down to, you know, I'm going to tell you, first thing you're going to do is jack it up. I'm going to show you how to secure different things, but the next one you get on, you are going to have to figure it out because it might not be the exact same. That is the gift and the curse of this industry is no call is the same, which is great for any people that doesn't like the complacency of doing the same thing over and over again. But at the same time, it really does make it hard for training purposes because you can only give them the best tool and hope they know how to use it from there. Teaching someone in the yard of how to dolly a flat tire, double pick something, or even if you've got something in your yard with a broken ball joint or a missing front end, that only goes so far because you are in a controlled environment and nothing happens the same. It's uh, when I was fairly green, we had a, a snowmobile accident and I was in a wrecker and I was like, I'm getting this on my truck because I was determined. And looking back at how I did that, I balanced it on the wheel lift itself. I had a single line, but looking back on it now, after I've done ATVs and trailers and the Sea Dew trailer on my wrecker, like physically on top of my wrecker, I would have done it completely different, where I would have gotten it up on the tailboard of the truck and then secured the skis to the wheel lift instead of straddling the whole thing on the wheel lift. And it's things like that where that's a massive learning curve to you and whether that takes you a year to get over that cur curve for you or five years doesn't matter all you got to do is learn every day nothing's going to be the exact same thing twice i always say with light duty towing it should be after about a year year and a half you should be about 80 to 85 percent of calls you should be able to do on your own you know, that's all your basic breakdowns. It's all your basic ball joints. You're missing wheels. You're, you know, your flat tires on dollies, all of those things within a year, year and a half, you should be able to do 80 to 90% of those. That 10% 10 to 20%, I guess, depending that's 20 years that that's, you know, that, like I said, there's still guys out there that'll tell you, you and I both know an operator that's been at it forever. Most humble man in the world. Shout out to Dave. That'll yeah. tell you he still hasn't. You know, there's still things he runs into when he scratches his head. This guy's been doing it since Christ was a choir boy, right? <laughs> that, that last 10 to 20% never comes. It's a slow grind to it, but it'll, you'll never be at that 100%. Anyone that says that they are, I can tell you that I can come back with 99% of cars. Very rarely will I leave a car behind. 
but there's always going to be that one. And I'm, you may not have ran into it yet, but it's, it's out there, right? It's out there. So for new guys coming in, that is the important part is that, you know, remember that even these guys that have been doing it 10, 15, you know, even five, eight, Hey, nowadays with turnover in the industry, doing it five to eight years, you're, you're a veteran because you know, a lot of people aren't, aren't lasting. Yeah. The turnover rate is high. Even, you know, for guys thing. like us, just like anything. Yeah. Don't even for guys like us, the start. there's still, there's still stuff that we don't know. So never think that you're going to know it all. And I think if you keep that attitude and you keep that approach and you're willing to ask questions and, and, and not criticize, that is probably the most important part out there as well. You talked about it. You see a guy loading something ass backwards. You can ask questions. Feel free to ask that guy questions, but never be bigger than that guy. Oh, he doesn't know what he's doing. I know best. Listen, we all started somewhere and we've all, we all have bad habits. So never think that you're better than all that. That is probably some of the best advice. Never think you're better than what you are. Yeah. Stay humble. Yeah. yeah. And get training. That's the biggest thing. More training you can do from as many people as you can, whether that's going to a program like Rackmaster, they've got a very good program. Roadside training that you have that they are providing. They can provide some good knowledgeable. Ask those people that are, that are there. Just ask as many people. And if they're in a position to give you hands-on experience, whether that's going over and actually showing you how they fucked that up, because us sitting here and telling you how to do something, I know for myself it doesn't it doesn't work for me. You gotta I be have hands to be on. there and doing it. You gotta be hands right. on, you gotta be there doing it. No, those roadside trainings, I remember when I went to the roadside training, I had been at it probably four years. The first time I attended the roadside training, I remember going into it, I thought this is bull. I don't need this. I had attended the rec master training and I'm like, you know, what am I going to learn from this? But I went in with an open mind and be damned. I learned something I did not know. And I don't know how I didn't know. We were talking about broken ball joints and we were talking about, if you can picture this, the Vulcan wheel grids. So as we know, we have our little keeper pins, right? You slide your spoons in, you put your keeper pin in to keep your spoons from popping out. Well, when they're not in use, there's also that little hole that you can drop them in to keep those swivels on them on the outside from, keep you know, flapping straight. around. The gentleman was explaining ball joints and he said, you know, one way to keep the spoon from kicking out on you is to put your keeper pin in there while it's under tilt. Blew my mind. I hmm. sat there and went, I always knew about that hole. I don't know how I didn't know this, but it made sense. Cause what does that do? We've all seen it where if you cut or if you hit, you know, Lord forbid jackknife your wheel lift. You'll have the spoon kick out by keeping that keeper pin in there and then using a secondary pin for your spoon still. You can actually keep it from pivoting out. And with a broken ball joint where everything is loose and wants to come out, it is a perfect situation. So that's an example of keeping an open mind going into training where I thought I knew most of it at that point. I was a little greener. I was a little, you know, more high on my horse a little less humble. And I thought I'm not going to learn anything. And I came out of that training, even being, you know, three, four, I don't remember how many years I was at it at that point, veteran who'd been through rec master, who, you know, had a fairly good track record, never would have thought that I would have learned something like that. And something so vital as that. So always keep an open mind, always keep your eyes open. Those, uh, those Vulcan trucks are supposed to come with two sets of pins. The ones that are on the chains are technically for that hole. And the separate one, the loose ones, are actually for the spoons to prevent oh, really? them from being kicked out. Hey, look, I learned yes. something They always get too. lost. They normally leave them in a bag in the one toolbox, and they get thrown The, in the chains always somewhere. break off anyways, and you end up with, you know what I mean, loose pins that you carry in your pocket that you go home and park the truck and forget until the next guy calls yeah. you and asks you where the keeper pins are. That, that's happened to me before. But uh, <sighs> another thing, ratchet strap between the two spoons at the end. Right, pull them together. Just put a ratchet strap. Get it tight. You're not pulling up, so you don't have to worry about it pulling out. But that'll just keep them together. Yep. Right? Yeah. No, like I said, not everything is the same. That's another great example. Right? What was the, the old line I used to tell you? There's a uh, hundred right ways to do it and a thousand wrong ways. And as, as long, long as you are doing it within... Right ways, you're doing all right. Yeah, as long as it's one of the right ways, I don't give a shit. Now, long... speaking about right and wrong ways, Ooh. we've uh, we've got a few reviews here. I've gone and I've canvassed ontario canada and i've found four reviews now i've got two reviews from one company and two reviews from the other 
And this, the first ones that we're going to go over, we've got a good review and we've got a bad review, but the owner has never replied to any of these reviews. And I'm leaving the company names right out of it. I'm leaving the location right out of it. All you guys know it's in Ontario. First of all, before you get into that, I want to say your segue skills have gotten much better. Thanks. That man. was the smoothest transition I have ever seen you go from one topic <laughs> to another. It used to be, did you know that there is a brown truck? Speaking of Facebook reviews. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so google reviews actually asshole. Ah, fair enough um the impacts that they can have we'll touch on that later so this is a five star review uh said by so and so uh 2 30 a.m 30 minutes east and looking to go 130 kilometers to get me and my dog home and these guys were prompt professional and got us home safely i know towing is the job but they nailed the customer service in my eye five stars that's a great review so if anyone's looking to get your service they see that and they're like awesome Absolutely. but then they scroll down a little bit further and they see a one star review the same Tow company driver, sorry this these reviews are from the same company these two reviews are from the same company okay. yes gotcha the tow driver happened to be close to an accident took complete advantage of the situation no estimate was giving a complete vulture vehicle was towed eight kilometers dropped then picked up again without approval, held in their compound overnight. Yeah, BS. Nearly 900 bucks. When the bill was questioned, the classic answer from these slime balls, insurance will pay for it. Stay away from these vultures. This is why we pay the highest insurance rates. I can tell you right so, now that was from Ontario. <laughs> me looking at that from yeah. an objective mind, I yeah. see one good review about a tower doing his job. And getting them home safely mm -hmm. cool and then i see another one where one of the drivers was taking advantage of someone else in a bad situation allegedly so the customer claims allegedly so the customer claims but if i'm a customer and not a tower i have no idea about the towing industry and i'm having a bad day i don't want to see that and know that there's a potential because it's happened before apparently to get taken advantage of well, I'm going to play devil's advocate on this. Okay. The good review absolutely was great. It shows that it was a customer that called them looking for service because 30 minutes east of them and looking to go 130 kilometers, which tells me that they didn't just stumble upon them. It sounds like they called the company, the company attended, right? Our job is to tow cars. We've talked about that when we talk about passengers and everything. Our job is to tow cars. Customer service is an important part of that, but isn't the primary goal of our job. This operator seems to have made a good relation with the customer. The customer seemed very happy. That is great. As for the negative review, and neither of them, you're right, has the company replied to. I think both of them worthy a reply. At the same time, you got to watch because you don't want to, especially with angry replies, angry reviews. Giving a reply can sometimes reignite the customer, can sometimes, if they're not happy with your reply, snowball the problem, right? We have seen social media attacks like that and reviews commonly where, you know, you piss off one guy, him and his five friends will go leave a company negative reviews. I seen one recently where through social media, a guy went in for an interview. I guess they didn't hire him. He turned around and gave them a one-star review. Is that a worthy review? No, uh -huh. but it happens. This situation specifically where they talk about was nearby to an accident, no estimate. We do not have all the information from it. I am willing to bet the customer that left this review did not have all the information to it as well. Did the police order them to remove it? Right? Was it a situation like that? We know that there are new programs coming out to protect consumers and let them have the choice, make sure they're aware, you know, crack down on the towing industry. But at the same time, just, just the wording of this one alone, and I'm sure the guy was pissed when he wrote it, guy or girl, the wording alone just... Seems like a dickhead of a customer. And I'm not saying that that is an excuse to not, you know, reach out and try and solve this problem because that review does look terrible. You are correct. But there's something about the wording. There's something about the way it's written. You know, you call them vultures two, three times, right? You and I have both worked for companies who did police towing. We were under contract. We would get a call, but we would be driving by it. We'd stop in. Does that make us vultures? 
Well, you don't know where this guy heard your call. You don't know if you happen to wreck your car right in front of this guy. It makes him a vulture for showing up. I'm not saying there isn't predatory towings out there, but I'm just saying everything that I see from this review, the owner does need to address it. But I'd like to know more before, you know, as a consumer, and it's tough because as a consumer who is a tow operator, I can break that down a little bit more, but you are right. Anyone that just comes across that on Google when looking for a towing company is not going to think the same way, sees that and goes, oh, these guys are dickheads, right? And that's why a reply is crucial. With a reply from that bad one, you can say, well, I'm sorry that you feel this way about the service provided. This is the situation. This is why it happened. And yeah, posting that on a public forum isn't the best, but if it's better, it's going to be better than potential customers just reading this and full stop at the end. If you can make a reply and you can actually explain the situation on the back end of things, that can go a lot further. And I don't even think you have to explain it on the back end of things, though. I think as a company responding to that, you get a good review. It's simple. Hey, we appreciate you reaching out, leaving the review. Thank you for your, your business. As a bad review, we are sorry that you feel this way. Please contact us directly, and we will do our best to resolve this situation. As, as someone looking at it, you see that bad review, you go, okay, oh, but look, the company is trying to address it. We've talked about that before. Yeah. You don't have to, you know, do not get in a fight with the customer in the comment <laughs> section of your reviews. It's a terrible goddamn idea. So but you have more with replies, so let's get to those. So this is a five-star with a pl uh, reply. Different towing company. The first two that we went over, this is a completely separate towing company. Okay, fair enough. I need a car relocated by a flatbed at approximately 30 kilometers and choose to go with blank towing based on reviews and cost. That's a great it name, blank great... towing. I'm sorry? That's a great name, blank towing. I like yeah, that. They, they use their name, but I <laughs> blanked it out, if you will say. <laughs> it was a great service from the friendly first point of contact with dispatch to the driver. Handling the move, he was friendly, knowledgeable, and courteous, and arrived on time and professionally loaded, transported, and unloaded the vehicle. Thank you for the great service. Highly recommend. Don't hesitate to call blank towing. Cheers. Awesome review. This yep. is their response. Thank you for your review and glad our staff was able to take care of your every need. It's a tough business to deal with many people that are already having a bad day. Thanks again. Awesome. To the Perfect. point. Yep. Thanking the customer. Yeah, perfect. perfect. That's all you wanted. Now, before you move on to the next one, hold on. Before you move over to the next one, that's exactly what we just talked about. Thank you for your business. Thank you for leaving the review. Make them feel appreciated for it. We need to push our customers to leave reviews when they actually, more people are likely to complain than they are leave good reviews. So the fact, reach out to your customer, thank them for it, and move on. Now, I will tell you this. This company that we're talking about right now, they had like 60 or 80 reviews at a four and a half star average. So not bad. Yep. So this is a one star. Took forever and price is high, plus they don't have change back. Now, the reply, hi, Cal or Carl. I can't locate a call that matches your comments, but if you never receive change back, I will personally deliver locally or have it mailed out to you. Our drivers carry little to no cash for safety reasons. As far as waiting too long, I realize minutes feels like 10. Please contact management so we can investigate the circumstances of this call and make things better in the future. Thank you. I think that's a great, re I think that's a great reply from the company. Awesome. Yeah. Absolutely. You couldn't make it any better. There he was went personal and used his name. Yep. Right. So really showed that it wasn't a bot reply. Called out the situation because I think he's kind of going with the fact that this guy might not have actually been a customer of his. Either he left it by mistake or it's just, you know, trying to be a dick and, and, and lower somebody's yeah. rating with the trolls we have. Um, that's why he's saying I can't find a call that matches you. But by all means, if you have information with me, I will fix this problem if you did not get change back. Yeah. And there was, a, there was another one from this company as well that I was looking at. And I think I was going to talk about it, but I didn't want to specifically say it just because the actual review itself was like four paragraphs long. <laughs> um, but 
in that one they went over as like oh my mom got into an accident and the driver that showed up said that they're going to charge 450 dollars to get towed meanwhile the insurance is going to pay for everything blah 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 it just was a whole piss and match this right. uh reviewer left on the towing company and the right. towing company specifically just stated i'm sorry we we're very upfront with our charges um if there was you would have gotten a bill and that's to get reimbursed by your insurance company at a later date. And he was very, very professional about that review as well. And it's just, it was all personalized. Yep. They mentioned by name. Yep. And it just made me feel like if I had no idea about the towing, be like, okay, this company has got two bad reviews that I can see and a boatload of good reviews. And they replied, they're active for all of these. And the bad reviews, they've given information on the situation and how they can rectify the situation the best they can and have asked them for more information than to continue on yep. the discussion privately which that, is just absolutely perfect you couldn't ask for a better reply so keep that in mind guys when you're answering you know reviews that you may be left right the first instinct especially on a bad review is going to be i i've seen one we had one years ago remember i i don't know if you were around for it there was a customer who had gotten his vehicle impounded for uh, uh, and he impaired said that driving. He said that was almost laptop or something. Well, yeah, I don't remember if it was what I don't remember what the deal was, but he left a negative review. And you know, first instinct is like, well, you know, share, care to share the story? Why your drunk ass was out driving around at two a.m. and why the car was in our yard in the first place? That's your first instinct because it goes, we're trying to conduct good business. The company was a very honest and great business. This customer, you know, customer by police choice, wasn't happy with the service, wasn't happy with the charges, even though they were contract set rates, left a review. Your first instinct is, this guy is a dick, you know, like, but you can't do that. I believe our approach that we took was, you know, we're sorry that you feel this way. If you would like to contact us directly to talk about the situation, we are more than happy to try and work out a resolution. To the point, a customer reads that, like you said there, a customer reads that, oh, they do have a bad review. I always like checking the bad reviews. Yeah. And then you read that comment, that reply, and you go, you know what? Okay, maybe they had a bad day. All businesses do, all operators do, all owners do. But it sounds like they're trying to make right of it. And I think that is very important. <laughs> You're talking about asshole people. We've had, I had this one lady come in close to Christmas, got impounded for DUI with her husband and three kids in the back seat. She had the audacity, audacity to ask if there was any discounts for the holidays. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's called a cab. <laughs> Should have thought that uh, one through before you got behind the wheel. And that's, this that's is crazy. the things of how much we would like to call a spade a spade. Like, you're the dumbass. I got yourself into this situation in the first place. You can't do that, especially in your review section. No, no, we are not the judge. We are not the jury. We are not the executioner, right? We just deal with the situations as they come, give honest replies, you know, just be professional. It, it's not rocket science. It really isn't, right? Like, there doesn't need to be a course on how to address. I'm sure there's out there, the internet, there's probably courses on how to address social media reviews or Google reviews. Mm -hmm. It's simple. Be honest, be professional, and be legitimate. You do those three things, you'll be all right. Don't fly off the handle. Hey, give it. Don't reply right away. Remember the 24-hour rule? Wait 24 hours before giving a response to it. Think it through. Because the first thing that comes to mind, especially on a negative review, is probably a bad time. Probably want to give yourself a little bit of time to think about that before you start replying or it could get ugly real fast. Yep. Speaking of reviews, I have my own review of a company that I will not name, which is a shame because they are a phenomenal company. It's time for Plain Guy Stories. <laughs> <laughs> this is a new segment on the show we all get to look <laughs> this, forward to. This may be a future segment on the show, Plain Guy Stories. If you guys do enjoy it, let us know. Drop by the website, towinglife.ca. Email us at thetowinglife at gmail.com. Or visit Facebook. our Facebook page at the Towing Life Podcast on Facebook. Selfless so, plug. So it's a great plug, right? So I had a customer. It was a roadside. 
Roadside had given us a call. We were swamped this day. I mean, we were busy. Roadside had given us a call. Car was broken down. Side of the road breakdown. Uh, we had given about a two-hour ETA. We were absolutely swamped. The only reason we gave such a long ETA is because there was comments in this call that said the member had made arrangements, the key was under the mat, and the vehicle was going to be left unattended. So, as we all know, you know, short of being on a highway, and it wasn't on a highway, it was in a town, that thing goes from priority up here on the side of the road to members are taking care of vehicles in a safe place. Let's put it down here. Cool. So, I got there about two and a half hours later, right? Knocked out as many calls as I could. I show up. Now, this is a weird little intersection that it was at. It's a weird two-way stop with a street light 10 feet away. It's a, it's a cluster of an intersection. And I don't see the car. So, I called the member up and I said, hey, whereabouts did you leave the car? Just out. I'm looking for it right now. You know, didn't tell them I couldn't find it yet. <laughs> Where'd you put the car? Well, it was, it was stopped right at the stop sign. Right in the middle of the road. I said, pardon? Said, yeah, it was stopped at the stop sign. It wouldn't move. We left it there. Roadside said it was good. We put the keys in it. Well, they left this vehicle at a stop sign of a very busy intersection, not on the shoulder. There isn't a shoulder. There's a sidewalk there. There was a couple driveways and a side road they could have pushed it off to. No, they left it dead center of the lane right at the stop line. Well, <laughs> yeah, I see. I, I see your reaction already. Well, I get scared. When I can't find it, I get scared. I get a weird feeling. I call our local OPP detachment. And I said, hey, did you guys happen to remove a vehicle from so-and-so intersection? They gave me the vehicle description. I said, yep. They left it in a live lane. No note on it. Nothing. So, you know, ABC towing removed it. It's at their yard. I call up my dispatcher. I said, I got a good one for you, and we have a problem. <laughs> hmm. Plan it all out to it. We call the customer. That now becomes a fight between the roadside and the customer because the customer is claiming the roadside told me to leave it unattended and leave the keys in it. At no point that I could see did the roadside mention or have any knowledge that it was in a live lane. They assumed it was pulled over to the side of a road. So, as for the customer side, it was terribly stupid. You do not just leave a car in the middle of an intersection and meh, roadside told me it's okay. As for a roadside, whenever you were setting up these unattended tows, make sure that the vehicle isn't in the road. Like ask the extra question, is the vehicle in a safe location? No, it's at a goddamn stop sign. Okay, maybe we shouldn't leave it unattended or we should get it to a safe location. So, this long drawn out story to get to the review for the customer or for the towing company. I arrived at the towing company the next morning to release the vehicle. They had released it. The, the customer there wasn't sure if there was going to be a bill. Now, out in the area that I'm in, there is a rotation system. So, when you get your police call like that, you are bumped back down the list. The owner of the company made the customer a deal. He said, Look, I'm going to get a hold of the OPP. We are going to explain this. If the OPP is willing to put me back at the top of the rotation, meaning that uh, didn't get used up as my police call on the rotation, I will not charge you. If huh? I can't, then I'm going to have to charge you as a police call because that's, that's business. And he doesn't have to do that. He doesn't even have to try and contact the OPP for this. He can say, hey, sorry, OPP called us. And he would be fully within his rights. I completely would support that decision. But he ended up calling the OPP explained everything to them. Obviously they had the call from me the night before. So they knew this was a legitimate thing. And the OPP agreed to put them back at the top of the rotation list. And he did not charge the customer. Now, wow. if you want to earn good reviews, and if you are in a small town, it's little things like that. What did this guy lose? He's still going to get his police rotation call, right? So yes, he did lose some labor on a vehicle. Front wheel drive a kilometer from the yard, you know, the customer, it, it was obviously a miscommunication between the roadside and the customer. He had every right in the world to charge this guy whatever he wanted, whatever his police rate was set at. I respect companies like that. Now, you cannot do that every day because you will not be in business. 
right? But a situation like that, I really want to give a props out to that company. I wish I could name them. As you know, we don't name companies here for those reasons, whether it's good or bad. But sir, if you are listening, that was a fantastic job that you did. You'll know who you are. And if all of us could, you know, just take a little decency when it comes to approaching situations like that. I think these good reviews that we talked about, you know, the taking the dog, I think they would go a lot farther. I think you are doing a great job at building the professionalism in this industry. Did you let them know that you do this podcast? No. God, no. You should have. I should have. Maybe I should have. I don't know. I don't know. Nobody knows that we do this podcast. Our one listener right now is sitting there going, I'm your biggest fan. You're our only fan. <laughs> not not only fans. We're not selling <laughs> pictures of ourselves for money. Speak for yourself. Whoa. You can find me on Plain Guy. I don't think no, I'm kidding. <laughs> Oh, yeah, you were dressed up as a baby yesterday, weren't you? Oh, man, that is a photo that will never actually hit social media. Um, oh, I'm glad I have a copy of it, though. Yeah, no, I uh, I definitely had consent form signed before anyone had to see me in that outfit. <laughs> um, hashtag can't me to me. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah, no, that was... Uh, <laughs> those are the good times. Those are the, what I do in my off time is my business. What I do in this podcast... It's also my business. <laughs> Weird rules to live by, my friend. Weird rules to live by. What about you? Did you guys do anything for, uh, you doing anything for Halloween? Or you, you live on a farm. Like, the kids would have to walk three kilometers up your driveway to get candy. So I'm guessing you don't see many. Probably shoot half of them as they're trying to come up the property, too. Uh, yeah, we, uh, I leave my driveway lights on. I, uh. I hate the last bit of candy I could give out to them last night. Um, yeah, we, we don't do much for Halloween out here. And I'm I'm the type of person where I stopped trick-or-treating when I was like 14. That was and what, three I, years ago? Fuck you. Um, <laughs> yeah, I just, I'm not super big on Halloween anymore, to be honest with you. I'm not big on Halloween either. My wife, on the other hand, it's a goddamn spectacle. She busted her butt last night and... And you know what? She is very patient with all the things we do towing related. We are going to talk about that in a future episode, uh, the wives of towing, right? And so for all the stuff they put up with, the least we can do is when she wants to have a Halloween get together or hand out candy or decorate, the least we can do is, you know, they support us in everything we do. The least we can do is support them and everything they like. 100%. So guys, as usual, any comments or questions, concerns, anything you guys have for us, I hope you enjoyed today's show. You can reach out to us. We've said it before. We'll say it again. Visit the Facebook page. There's constant weekend warriors, light duty warriors, heavy duty warrior photos that go up. We want you guys to submit them. We like to see them. You know, hopefully you can be featured as the next one. Visit, find us on Facebook at the Towing Life Podcast. You can email us directly if you have any questions at the to- or the towing life at gmail.com. Right? You can comment on the YouTube videos if you're watching. If you are not watching on YouTube, do us a favor. Head on over to YouTube. Drop a comment. It doesn't matter what it is. Everything helps the algorithm. So keep those comments coming in. It's one of the easiest ways to watch. You get to see all the nice things. We talk about Baker Heavy Towing. We talk about Cornwall Towing. Right? You know, We put a lot of work into all this. Head over there. Drop the comments. Visit the website, towinglife.ca. There is a contact us form. You can choose to stay anonymous if you want to tell us your stories, you know, kind of like we, the lady with the, uh, the impounded car, you got any stories like that, send them to us. We love them. You want to remain anonymous. We'll talk about your story. We won't name you, but you know, head on over, let us know. And I can't wait. We've had a couple of people contact us recently and we've got some good plans in the works for future episodes. So make sure that you're subscribed. Make sure that you are keeping up to date with these because you will not want to miss our future content. And with that said, guys, I hope you had a great Halloween. Pleasure having you here, and we'll see you in the next episode. Take care. Bye for now.